The day began with all the usual summit formalities, but it was soon down to business. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is forcing NATO to act, both in support of Ukraine and its own defense. President Volodymyr Zelensky spoke from Kiev, calling for more artillery and more financial help. This is not a war being waged by Russia against only Ukraine. This is a war for the right to dictate conditions in Europe, for what the future world order will be like. NATO will respond and is in it for the long haul. Ukraine can count on us for as long as it takes. This includes um, secure communications, fuel, medical supplies and body armor, equipment to counter mines and chemical and biological threats, and hundreds of portable anti-drone systems. Individual NATO members are continuing to make their own contribution to Ukraine's defense, but NATO leaders are also being asked to significantly boost their own deterrent deployments. The alliance's new strategic concept makes it clear that Russia is NATO's most direct threat, and so members are being asked to do much more to protect themselves. U.S. President Joe Biden announced new American troops to be based in Poland and Romania, more fighter jets in the U.K. and more ships in Spain. Today I'm announcing the United States will enhance our force posture in Europe and respond to the changed security environment as well as strengthening our collective security. In the coming year, members will have to identify 300,000 troops who can respond rapidly to new threats. It's a huge change and it will cost more money. Another significant achievement of this summit is the agreement over Sweden and Finland's bids to join. It will take time, but will strengthen NATO's northern flank, hardly what Russia had in mind. Leaders from Japan, South Korea, Australia and New Zealand joined the summit in the afternoon, recognition that NATO's new strategic vision also sees new challenges from China. Simon McGregor Wood, TRT World, Madrid.